What is the crack lads and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to set your team up in Dream Team. So a lot of people have been asking me for this. A lot of people have been asking me whether they should play a certain formation, whether they should play quick counter possession or long ball, what they all mean, how to get your team with the proper play style, you know, the form arrows, the live update. There is a lot of information to swallow with Dream Team and it's not really explained. Obviously, you know, it's it needs to be kind of you need to kind of play the game and learn the mechanics of it and learn what works and what doesn't work. If you are new to the series and you're average to good at the game or you want to improve from average to good or good to great or whatever way you want to put it, this stuff will work for you, right? It's basic stuff, but it's setting your team up right off the pitch so how they'll perform on the pitch will be more consistent and better. I'm not promising you that you'll be winning every game because look, it's online game and stuff happens. You're going to lose games. You're going to win games. You're going to come up against guys that have your number. You're going to come up against guys that you smash. It's just the way it is, right? But this can make you consistent, all these tips and tricks here. So we're going to give a brief rundown of everything. Team play style level, team play style, uh, coach and affinity, all that sort of stuff. I would definitely recommend checking out the two videos I've already covered in depth on team play style level because I'm not going to focus too much on that and on the player form arrows and the live update and all that. So the first thing that we'll, we'll, we'll just cover here, right? is the team play style level. So as you can see here, mine is 91 overall. Uh, you can see the little 91 rating in the top right hand of your screen. If I hover over to a player and then I flick right on the right stick, you will get the player's profile. So you have his age, his weight, his height, his B, live update, B, his stronger foot, right foot, whatever. You'll also have at the bottom uh, how well he links up with the manager's um, team play style. So my manager here, his team play style is out wide, right? So when I go over to Neymar, his out wide is 97. So the higher that that rating is, the higher it brings up the overall squads and the higher it brings up the overall player's effectiveness within that formation. So for example, Maldini is 45. You can see his out wide is 45 there. So he's linked up with the manager 45% of the way in terms of Maldini is still going to go out and be an absolute baller. He's going to be a beast. But I can improve that by training up Maldini. As I said, check out the videos I've done because it's about 10 minutes of that video where I explain it in detail how to improve your squad. But for example, right, uh, Munayin is 99, okay? If I transfer him out with Maradona, who's 48, right, it'll go down to 89 overall, okay? If I bring off Neymar and I bring in Muriel, it'll go down, or Ansu Fati, it'll go down, right? So obviously my team play style level is a bit lower there. So the trick is to this, is to get players that, you know, you have that are going to be on your starting level and train them up to have the out wide uh, play style so that you're, you know, a better link, that you have a better team play style level, right? So if I put Diaz back in here and I put Munayin back in here, we're going to up that to 91. So the higher this is, the better it is, okay? That's the first thing. As I said, check out the video that I already have. Um, you can see there that Vieira is 75, Romario is 75, Ronaldinho is 85, Pedri is 91, and so on and so forth. So the more of these that have like 90 plus, that's going to max out at 100 instead of 91 overall. And obviously managers, the more expensive managers have different um, ratings. So if you buy Klopp, for example, I think Klopp is like 85 or 86 quick counter. So if you've got quick counter players, you won't need to train up your players as much to get a higher team play style level. So that covers that, right? Same thing with the farmer. So if we go over to a player profile here and we press square, and we press square again, we get their live update, right? So you can see this in their player profile and you can see it by pressing square and cycling through what's shown on their player cards. So the legends, Maldini, Piaul, Vieira, Romario, Ronaldinho, they're all set at B by default. Munayin, Diaz, one is B, one is A, okay? So this is taken from data in real life. So if Diaz scores a hat-trick for Liverpool today or tomorrow or whenever he's playing, and, you know, he'll probably be on A form next week. Munayin gets taken off and he gets injured, he might be on a D form or whatever. So this is random at best sometimes, but there is a bit of method in the madness as well. So if the player is performing well in real life, he's going to have a better chance of being, you know, a higher rating on the, on the player update. So what this means is that when you go into a match, this rating A, B, C, this lettering system changes to form arrows, right? So the A, form, a rating changes into a form arrow that if you're lucky enough that you get a player's rating fully up, Diaz is going to get a boost to his stats, right? So he might get a plus three on speed just because he's in form, okay? So I, again, I have a video on that. I don't want to spend a massive amount of time in it, okay? So once we've all that done, right, 
we can start to go in. Obviously, we've got our reserves. That's just your list of players that you have. You can change any of them onto your substitutes. You've got your subs on there. And you've got your team, which is all, obviously you have a couple of automa automated options. So you can auto pick players based on their stats, on their play style. You can see that I could bring my play style up to 97 if I bring on Reese James and Nuno Mendes. The problem is Mendes is C and James is D. So I'm not going to do that. You know what I mean? I want to keep my best players in. So by stats, I can have my play. This would be the best team that I can put out. But no changes is just what I've chosen myself. In match roles, right? So we're going to cover this in a couple of minutes um, in terms of... Or actually, yeah, we can cover it now, right? So this is just to choose your captain. Some players have a captaincy um, uh, trait. So Vieira has it. Um, I'll just show you there, actually. Some players have a captaincy trait, right? So if you go into their player profile and you go down, you can see Vieira at the bottom left has captaincy, okay? So when he has that, he gets a boost as well. Next up, we have got... Long free kick, short free kick, free kick taker two. Uh, there's very self-explanatory. Players to join attack. So that's on corner kicks. So if you want Van Dyke to come up for a corner kick, or Corona, or Vieira, or whoever you want to go up for a corner a kick, or for attacks, join an attacks, that's who you pick. So you pick whichever one that you want there, right? Same, you can pick three options. Automatic pass match support. So this is a match support that when your players start to get tired, you can automate this, that it'll bring players on, subs on, very late in the game, flexible depending on how tired they are, or very early. So say Ronaldinho is 60% tired after 40 minutes, you know, the AI might actually, or the computer might take him out and put in a player that's fresh. Offside trap, choose whether or not players would automatically attempt to play the offside trap during, man during matches. So that's players that are not under your control, that you're not controlling. The AI will either step forward or step back. And then the AI can also decide whether if you enable this, you can change it to uh, enable automatic attack defense levels. So this is when you press up on the D-pad or down on the D-pad if you want to go fully attacking or fully defensive. Um, it's the blue little icons that come up in the game. So we will show you a quick graphic on that while I'm talking about that. And then you've got edit squad number, right? So that's pretty self-explanatory. I haven't even done that yet. Piaul is still an eight. Vieira is still number seven. There's going to be a big battle for the number seven shirt and the number 10 shirt in this squad, but we will do that eventually. So that's kind of that, right? Now, getting to the getting to the big kind of portion of this video, right? The tactics. So change manager, self-explanatory, whatever managers that you have, you can change them. Change formation, self-explanatory, whatever formation you want, you can just do a quick preset change formation there. Um, you can also manually change formation, which we'll show you in a second by dragging and dropping, right? We'll show you that in a second, how I'm going to set my team up. But the tactics here, right, are going to be team play style, or sorry, Team play style. So this is kind of set in stone for you based on what manager that you pick. As I said, check out the video that I have. This is just an explanation. It gives you a quick explanation. Click right, uh, flick right on the D-pad and it tells you what, what this formation does, what the manager does when you're attacking, when you're defending, and when you after you gain possession, which is a quick counter, right? So that's the two options or the three options there that it tells you. Obviously, with long ball, you're going to have different attack patterns, different attack options. Uh, quick counter, you're going to have different again. So whatever right is right for you. As I said, there's no one size fits all, lads. There's no one size fits all for anything in Dream Team. It's whatever suits you. I'm a possession-based player. I genuinely think if you're struggling, right, and you're watching a lot of videos where people are using quick counter or using clap, right, I genuinely think you should try out wide, okay? I think you can play so many different ways without wide. When you lose the ball, this is the area of the pitch that's being defended, which is 90% of goals conceded are in that area of the pitch where it bypasses the midfield, and it goes into that area of the pitch where you're going to be, you know, your back four versus whatever's coming attacking. Or if you're on a counter-attack and you get intercepted, it's maybe a back two versus whatever's coming against you. So it could be a three on two in your favor or else against your favor. So it could be it could be one that you try out, lads. I definitely think that this is the best formation. Um, I've tried three or four of them on different platforms and different profiles. I've talked to a lot of people. Um but I think that that is the best one, in my opinion. Now, individual instructions, right? This is a very, very, very important one. I'm going to leave this just for about 30 seconds because I'm going to be setting my team up and showing you guys what I've done just to get through this and the sub-tactic, right? We're going to show you that. So the first thing I'm going to show you, right, is how to change and set up your manager and your formation the way you want to play it. So for me being a player, right, if you are playing a 4-5-1, which is this, I would genuinely put your center backs back as far as they can go. Now, some people will say this is sweaty. I don't like conceding goals from kickoff. So if you're conceding goals from kickoff, you should definitely try this, right? Oh no, we don't want that, right? So you want to tuck them in there 
And then you want to have one of these as a third center back. So put him in until he's a CB. And then you want to have your right back here, back as you, as you can. I would always put Vieira or your DMF, whether it's Barrios, Kante, whoever. I would play like a Barcelona style formation. So I'd play a CMF, a DMF and an AMF, right? I usually li like to keep these a little beside each other. And then I like to keep one of these back defensive. So whatever side you decide to put your CB at, bring back a hard working left midfielder or else if you're having a this side and you want to tuck Maldini in here and have a really solid left back and roll reverse, you can do that too. And then have this one as you're attacking. You can keep him as a right midfielder in an attacking area and then push Romario up as far as he can go. So that's kind of the formation that I would go with, right? It's kind of an unorthodox 4-5-1. So I'm going to be basically stopping the ball with Vieira. Vieira is going to be acting really as a, as a kind of, when I don't have the ball and I'm trying to get possession back, Vieira is going to be acting as an anchorman, like an out-and-out -out anchorman. Pedri is going to be my orchestrator. Ronaldinho is going to be my link with Romario. And then my wings is going to be my main play style. As I said, if you're playing a 4-3-3 and you want quick counter possession and stuff like that, you can set your team up like this, right? So say we're playing quick counter. You can play this. You can have him sitting there. And then you can have a flat two right so that means that you're going to be getting the ball in the center areas of the pitches you're going to be playing between these three guys here and you're going to be spraying the ball forward to any of these options as, as wide as you possibly can right so for me i'm going to be playing this formation here as i said i'm going to have my hard work and left back there and i'm going to have my right midfielder here so that's going to be what works for me i've got a lot of options with that i'm very defensively sound and solid now if you want to change it up, right, and you're thinking, okay, you're 2-0 down after 30 minutes, it's not working, and, and you want to kind of change things without changing things, so to speak, while going into the menu and stuff, right? The biggest thing you can do is go to your sub-tactic, right? So this sub-tactic is basically having a second play style. So you can see here that when I choose this to on, it's gone back to my default formation. So this is the default formation with this manager. This is the formation that I've customized. So when we go into sub-tactic sub and we turn it on, Okay, we have all the same options as we had before. We've got edit position, where you can edit basically manually edit position. You've got your team play style, which is whatever play style that you want to choose. Now for me with this manager, the only other formation I could go with is probably possession game. But to be honest, I'm going to stick to out wide. This is really helpful if you've got a manager like Pochettino who can play three or three, I think, play styles. Very similar that you can interchange them. If you want to switch things up and go from out wide to quick counter or long ball. And you've also got your individual instructions, right? We'll cover them in just two seconds, right? But this sub tactic is going, these individual instructions, you can change them with the sub tactic, but they do come in from the main tactic as well. So you can change them manually there. So for this, right, say you're two, two, one down. Okay. You can do this two ways. Okay. If you're a very good player, you can do this two ways. So if I'm in here and I want to make this a very attacking option, right? I can do this. I can make this a three at the back formation, okay? And I can say, right, I'm going to goal down. I'm going to goal down straight away. I need to switch things up a bit. Right midfielder, left midfielder, two up front, and there you go, right? You can change this as much as you want, and you can have a very, very, very dynamic formation. So what you will be doing is, when that is activated, you will be starting the match like this. And then in the game, you can switch on this. So you go three at the back. So say you go one nil down or two nil down, but you know you can get back into the game, you're chasing the game. You can very easily switch to this, which is an attacking based option. Similarly, if you want to retain a lead, right? You could do this. You can go five at the back very easily. Keep everything there. Keep everything there. And there's your five at the back. So you're two nil up or one nil up against a really good player. And you want to go sweaty, try hard, hold on to the point style defense, right? So what happens then is you start the game like this. You need never turn on the sub tactic if it's, you know, one all or two one or whatever. But if you're up three nil and you just want to close out the game, you can do that. Or you're holding on to a lead in the last 10 minutes. You can switch to that in game and your opponent won't really know what you're doing because obviously, you know, it's during a match. It's not going to be... When he when you go in, right, to change uh, matches or change formation and tactics, he's going to see what you're doing. You know what I mean? And he's going to just be able to see, right, he's changed to five at the back. Whereas with this, it can kind of catch people off guard, right? 
So the last thing to choose, right? I'm not gonna keep this, I'm gonna change that in a minute, but the last thing to choose is your individual instructions, right? So this is very important. This has been game changing, I think, for me with Vieira. So for this, you get two. You get two attack and you get two defending, right? You have your attacking option, you can choose. You can turn it off. You can have defensive, offensive, or anchoring. The defensive options is basically players will refrain from pushing forward in attack. So when I throw this on to Paddy V, right? He's not going to bomb forward when we're on the attack. He'll stay there. When you couple that up with his second one, which is anchoring, the selected player is restricted from drifting out of position. For example, your center forward will keep to a center position. Your wingers will not venture inside. So for Vieira, Vieira is going to stay DMF. He's not going to go forward. He's not going to go forward at all. He's going to sit at the pocket. Now, if you want to change these, you can also go offensive. The assigned player will position himself higher up the pitch. So if you wanted to play D um, you know, Van Dijk carrying the ball forward and keep his runs going, you could pick that. You could also have anchoring, which is basically restricting the player from moving. So for this one, I'm keeping it defensive. If you are playing a DMF, a deep-sitting DMF, I would definitely put the attack one defensive and the attack two anchoring, or whichever way you want to put it. And then for the defense ones, you're going to have counter-target or deep line, right? So this is for putting a player... Um, I don't know why this is on Piaul. Right? So we're going to play Romario here. So this is going to be our counter target here okay so the counter target is going to be in the opposition's box so Romario is not going to drop back and help the defense right if you're playing one man up front or you're playing a 4-3-3 three, three, you don't need your your striker coming back you know what I mean you don't need him so keep him up there right so I'm going to put that and that's going to be my counter attack you've also got a deep line the assigned player drop back to position that allows him to join in the offense with ease this cannot be assigned to a defensive player so again with that one there we have that on our second one, which again is on Paddy V. So Patrick Vieira is pretty much going to be like a third man sweeper centre back in the Beckenbauer role that he used to play in real life. Kind of like Cloud Makalele. He's got the engine to drive forward when he gets the ball, but that's my manual choosing to bring him forward or not. So if I leave a gap, it's on me. It's not on the AI. So that is pretty much how to set up everything, lads. We've covered everything there. Um, as I said, setting your team up to the best possible way is, is, is huge and it can have a massive effect on you uh, and on your team and how they perform in the pitch. I'll throw a couple of clips in here of like how my players are out wide. You can see, um, you know, how they're positioning themselves out wide and stuff. But for that, I genuinely think trying an out wide formation and trying to, you know, having an unorthodox formation, don't stick to the default formation, drag and drop players a couple of different positions so that it's not, you know, they're not static. You know what I mean? Drop them in and drop them out of different positions. Um, and if things are going against you, have your sub tactic. You know, if you are a guy that concedes a lot of goals, have a sub tactic that, you know, keep things tight in the first half. I mean, a lot of people, what I see do now is start with the sub tactic, right? So they'll start the match and then they'll put on the sub tactic within the first 10 seconds. They'll keep it tight at the back, maybe with a five. And then after they settle in and they decide, okay, this player, I'm better than him or I can outplay him, then they'll switch to their main tactics. So it's a couple of mind games, I suppose, as well as you go up the divisions. But that is it for me, lads. Hopefully I, I didn't miss anything there, but that is it for me. Um, it's a long video, but I think that it did need to be an in-depth one. Um, as I said, check out a couple of the other content creators. I know Sep does a lot of real-time tactical talk as well. So check that out in his streams if you haven't already. And that is it for me. I'll be back quite soon. Other than that, lads, uh, peace. And I hope this helps you. Let me uh, know if you've missed anything so I can add it onto the video. Other than that, talk to you in a bit.